All righty then. Okay, folks, we are live. Now, don't forget, there's about a six to seven second, maybe even 10 second delay. So welcome. God bless you all. We're going to begin in prayer in a moment, but just let's wait a few more minutes. By the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. Corinth, I think you asked me this question yesterday, correct? I think Corinth asked me about Jesus dying. So I decided I'll do a session on the death of the God-man, that Jesus Christ is God who became man, God who became man to experience a human death, to pay human debt without ceasing to be God. So the God-man died. Welcome, everyone. God bless you all. Bless you richly. As you can see, I'm in a hotel room. <clears throat> Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, my brother. Everything perfect and good is from the triune God by his grace. Michael, good to see you, brother. Michael D. Revelation 22, every one of you. Good to see you. Light 68, praise the Lord. I'm actually away from home. I'm in Wisconsin. I'm in a hotel room. I'm with Usama Dakdok, a mighty soldier of Jesus Christ. Pray for him in his ministry and support him as well. He's been teaching at a local church, and he's been gracious enough to allow me to teach with him. So that wasn't planned. And I want you to also thank our brother Orbiter High, who's also known as Protestant Believer on <clears throat> YouTube. He's got a YouTube page. Subscribe to Protestant Believer's YouTube page. And Usama's YouTube page is Usama Way, Usama Dakto. And thank our brother Orbiter because he's going to help me to help you by posting verses to make it easier for me to teach. So glory to Jesus Christ. Make sure to smash that like button. Make sure to subscribe to this page and pray in Jesus' name that this year will be the year of redemption, release, and restoration. God opens doors to use me <clears throat> more mightily for his glory. I've been traveling a lot more in these past two years than I've ever done so and pray that he continues to send me forth all places glorifying Jesus Christ and to give me the grace and the provision to build up the YouTube page. <clears throat> to produce more sessions as well as shorter clips to enable me to be technologically savvy, to use this platform for the glory of Jesus Christ as our precious brother David Wood has been doing for the last 10 years. So keep praying for me, folks, and pray that the Lord Jesus helps me to achieve my goals, to be holy unto the Lord Jesus, holier than I've ever been before by the power of the Holy Spirit and healthier. I'm almost there. I've almost reached the goal of re regaining my health pray the lord helps me to achieve those goals for his glory and crucify my flesh and destroy my vanity so i don't do it for pride or arrogance vanity or for the praise of men right keep praying for me <clears throat> so if you wonder where i'm at i'm in a hotel room in wisconsin far away from home pray for tonight's meetings lord jesus anoints our brother usama dakdok and anoints me to work in perfect union with him because the church was blown away by the information they heard from Osama and myself, right? Love you too, 1611, right? But it's going to be archived, so you can watch it later, my brother. So anyway, yep, hit the like button and share. Yes, I need it. I need it. And also, I'd, <clears throat> it'd be remiss of me not to mention my two angels, my nine-year-old firstborn daughter and my six-year-old baby girl. I love them. After my salvation in Jesus Christ, the greatest gifts that he's given me is to be their daddy. So pray for them that God will provide for them and bless them and flood them in his love and keep them safe, right? No, you're not, Fadi Harun. I don't believe you. I'm sorry. If you're sincere, then I'll answer your questions. But stick around. I have a topic, and we'll talk about it if you have sincere questions. Okay. Let me just begin by invoking and praising the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I mean this when I say, <clears throat> and I mean this from my heart. I am not qualified to be teaching God's word if the Holy Spirit of the living God doesn't enable me, empower me with wisdom and knowledge from his glorious presence to do this. So my hope and trust is in the Holy Spirit of the living God. I pray the Holy Spirit will fill us fully possess us all believers fill us and enslave us to himself and fully possess every aspect and part of our being 
and transform us to become like Jesus Christ in holiness, in purity, in worship, in devotion, <clears throat> in obedience, in love, sacrificial love, sacrificing our ourselves for one another for the glory of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> so that in everything we say and do, Christ will be glorified. So may the Holy Spirit just fill us for the glory of Jesus. Father, I just want to say we love you and we praise you. Have mercy on us, Father. Have mercy on me and forgive me for my imperfections and my flesh. Crucify our flesh. Save us from our imperfections. And Father, please be patient with us. And give us the grace to be patient with one another because I fail in that department. And Father, just anoint me to speak truth without error in the power of your Holy Spirit to glorify Jesus, your Son, in the hearts of believers and unbelievers <clears throat> alike. Fill my lungs and my chest and my throat with the breath of life, giving me the health I need to do this for your glory. And Father, anoint me that the sound of my voice will be pleasing to the ears of your servants and use my meager efforts and the power of the Holy Spirit to reach many people for the glory of your beloved, Jesus Christ, who's your very heart that became flesh, Father. And bless our loved ones. In my case, bless my daughters. Cover them with the blood of Jesus and protect them, Father. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. You guys ready? <clears throat> I should have brought a bottle of water. Alan Rahul, welcome, my brother. Lord bless you. You guys ready? Yep. Man, you know what? I got to get a trim. I'm far away from home, so I'm far away from my barber. So don't mind my bushy beard. I'm much younger than I looked, right? And, you know, but hey, man, my bald head doesn't look too bad. You got to admit, I make big look beautiful, right? Glory to Jesus Christ. Anyway, we're going to begin. <clears throat> we're going to talk about the death of the God man. Because this is an objection raised by Joe's witnesses. This is an objection raised by Muslims to try to undermine the deity of Christ. Chaldean Assyrian, how are you, my brother? I have a native Chaldean Assyrian. If you guys don't know, and I want to say it again, I am Assyrian, part of the Assyrian Chaldean community. I'm not Syrian. I'm not from Syria, and I'm not Arab. I am a descendant of a great, mighty nation, a nation beloved of God. The Assyrians were one of the first people to convert to the Christian faith. <clears throat> I was raised in a glorious church, a church, the church of the East, the church of my ancestors, that gave up many sons and daughters as martyrs for the glory of Jesus. And I asked the Lord Jesus to remember the blood of my ancestors, all the Assyrians that died because they loved Jesus, to bless these martyrs and honor their blood. By raising up more Assyrians and Chaldeans to be in love with Jesus, to give their life to Jesus, to preach the gospel of Jesus, and to bless my people. And I pray bless all nations, right? But from every nation, he raises up witnesses. And again, for the Assyrians listening, we have very different tribes among the Assyrians. I belong to the Jilu tribe, <laughs> right? And even within the Jilu tribe, you have, what's the word I'm looking for? Not tribe, but clans. There are clans within the Jilu tribe. I belong to the Zirye clan of the Jilu tribe. You have Bneme, Agamini, Bnemetne, Nare. We have a lot of them. God love all the Jilus and all the Assyrians and all the Chaldeans and all the nations. Bless us all for the glory of Jesus Christ. Just to let you know who my ancestors are, let me show you something. Orbiter, post Isaiah 19, 23 to 25. Yeah, we have a moron here, Kazimo Ostens. So most Assyrians are now Muslims are extinct. So you have, again, a son of Satan who makes his father the devil proud because he wants to deny the very evidence staring in his face that I'm Assyrian to his destruction and shame. Right? But anyway, <clears throat> keep it up, Kazimo, and I'll send you back to Mecca. So you can smooch the black stone. Sorry, I'm not politically correct. Isaiah 19, verses 23 to 25. Watch here. Isaiah 19, verses 23 to 25. you got two great nationalities running in your blood, medic for Christ. Chinese, because the Chinese gave us Bruce Lee, the greatest martial artist the world has ever known. And African, which gave us Jim Kelly, baby, and Enter the Dragon. Man, you come right out of a comic book. But anyway. Isaiah 19, 23, 25. Thank Orbiter for posting it. Let's read. Read with me, folks. Isaiah 19, 23, 25, so you can delve into the topic. 
In that day, there shall be a highway out of Egypt to Assyria. And the Assyrian shall come into Egypt and the Egyptian into Assyria, right? Egyptians and Assyrians, folks. Now let's read 24 and 25. Watch here. We're going to wait for 24, 25. All right. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. And that day shall Israel be the third with Egypt and with Assyria, even a blessing in the midst of land. So Assyria, Egypt, Israel. Folks, notice who, who my people are. Whom Jehovah the Lord of hosts shall bless, saying, Blessed be Egypt, my people. The Egyptians are God's people. And Assyria, the work of my hands. Now remember, I'm Assyrian. That means God made me by his hands. And nothing that God makes by his hands is ugly. So you better believe I'm beautiful. Don't hate. I'm the work of God's hands, and I am beautiful. Thank Jesus. And Israel, my inheritance. Beautiful. All right, now you got it. Now with that said, are we ready to delve into the topic? Are we ready to delve into the topic? Now, you can't falsify the Bible, folks. If the Bible says that the Assyrians are the work of God's hands and nothing ugly comes from God's hands, and you better not say any Assyrian is ugly or I'll lay hands on you. Hey, you. <laughs> All right. Let's get it. Let's go into the topic. Here's the objection. How can Jesus be God when he died and God can't die? And then a follow-up to that objection is, if Jesus is God and he died, who was running the universe? Who was running the universe? Now, you, you get the objection? You understand what the objection is? Jesus is God who died, but God cannot die. And if he died, who was running the universe? Yeah. Actually, Kazimo, I'm wondering if your mother was good and beautiful because she produced a dog like you. Let me block this guy. Hold on, guys. Let me block him one second. Yep. This dog of Satan. Blocked. And let's remove him. Sorry, guys. We got a dog of Satan trying to distract us. Okay. Are we ready now? Okay, let's begin. So you guys understand objection. Put a one if you get the objection. Put a two if you need further clarification. One for yes, two for no. What's the objection? God does not die. Jesus died. How can he be God? And if he's God who died, who is running the universe? Oh, what's up, Abu Qadr? How are you doing, buddy? Do you understand the objection? Okay. If you understand the objection, let's answer it. Un uh, understand what the assumption of the objection is. The assumption of the objection is that death means ceasing to exist, ceasing to be conscious, secession of life. Although there are groups like Seventh-day Adventists that believe that, this is not a biblical teaching. Because understand what the objection implies. If Jesus is God and he died, then who is running the universe? Assumption, implication? For Jesus to die, he must have ceased to exist. And if he ceased to exist, then he's not running the universe, and God never ceases to exist. But you understand the objection, right? Because we need to answer this biblically. We need to... Uh, we need to... <clears throat> Address this biblically. Okay, if you understand the objection, let's move on. Okay. Just want to make sure you guys understand the objection as the Holy Spirit anoints this session and blesses our hearts to hear the word of God. Okay, if you understand the objection, good. Boaz put one. Number one, the Bible nowhere defines physical death as secession of life, ceasing to exist. Nor does the Quran. If a Muslim brings up this objection, he's being dishonest or he's ignorant of what the Quran teaches. Okay? Because the Bible and the Quran both agree that physical death does not mean you cease to consciously live. Both the Bible and the Quran agree that when you die, your physical body returns to the dust, but you continue to exist consciously, in the case of the Bible, as a disembodied spirit or soul, because the Bible says that human beings have a spirit, human beings have a soul. Now, for everyone else listening, you serious students of the Quran, and this is also applicable to Alan Rahul, Ruhul, who runs a blog and deals with Muslims. Are you aware that the Quran nowhere says that human beings have a spirit? The Quran nowhere says that human beings are spirits. The Arabic word for spirit is ruh. Nowhere in the Quran are we told that human beings have spirits or are spirits. The Quran says human beings are souls. They have a soul. The word nafs. 
So I want you to be make sure you understand this. The Quran does not say human beings have spirits or are spirits. It says human beings have souls. They are souls. The word in Arabic for spirit is ruh. The word in Arabic for soul is nafs. But with that said, the Bible and the Quran agree that at physical death, that person's immaterial part, that part that's not physical, which the Quran calls the soul of the person, the Bible calls it a soul or a spirit, right? Continues to exist consciously even when the person dies physically. If you're with me, Orbiter, do you have Quran verses you can post? Thank you. Can you post Quran verses for me? Just want to make sure. If not, I'll have to get the Quran and read it. Yeah, Fadi, you're talking about Surah Al-Isra, Ayah 85. That's not the human spirit. Ar-Rukh in 1785 is about the spirit from Allah that comes down from Allah by the command of Allah to perform specific functions. That's Surah Al-Isra, 1785. Orbiter, post for me if you can. Chapter 2 of the Quran, verse 154. Chapter 2, verse 154. Guys, make sure you're following with me and that you're trucking along. And let me know if I'm losing you because you got to get this point. No, Allah has a spirit, Liz. He does have a spirit. But that doesn't mean he is spirit. He has a spirit, but that doesn't mean he is spirit. Now let's read chapter 2, verse 154, guys. Read with me. And call not those who are slain in the way of Allah dead. Nay, they are living... Only ye perceive not. Let me repeat it again. Chapter 2, verse 154 of the Quran. Do not say those who are killed in jihad, in the way of Allah, don't say they're dead. Nay, they are living. Only ye perceive not. So notice, people are physically killed, martyrs of Allah, but they're still alive. You catch it? Now let's go to chapter 3, verses 169, 170. No, Abu Qura, my brother from a different mother. I love you, man. Your bro brother in Christ. Nowhere does it say Gabriel is Allah's spirit. Please don't make it harder for yourself because this is what you did to me when you asked me the question about the glory that Christ gives to the disciples. When I went to answer, you went to an alien context to show that the glory means believers will be transfigured, theosis, which is not the glory that John had in mind. Don't make it harder for yourself, Abu Qura, by raising objections that need not be raised because that's not what John 17 was talking about, nor does the Quran say Gabriel is Allah's spirit. In fact, here, Abu Qura, show me in the Quran anywhere where Gabriel is said to be a spirit. Show me in the Quran anywhere where Gabriel is said to be the Holy Spirit. It does not exist. Why are you buying into the Muslim hype? Okay, now let's go back to 3, 169, 170. Let's post it one more time. Okay, one more time. 3169, 170. Yeah, who cares what Muslims tell you, Abu Qura? They tell you a lot of stuff. Tell them, prove it. Show me from the Quran where Jibreel, Gabriel is said to be the Spirit of Allah, the Holy Spirit, the faithful Spirit, or where Gabriel is even said to be a spirit. Where? Fadi, if you can't find that verse, I'm gonna I'm gonna block you from my page, Fadi Harun. I will take shahada if you show me where Gabriel is said to be a spirit. And if you can't, I'm going to block you. Okay, Fadi, Harun, that's my deal. You better show me the verse because you're going to get blocked. Chapter 3, verse 169, 170. Let's read, folks. No distractions in Jesus' name. Focus. 3, 169, 170. Let's read. Post it again. Or, I'm sorry, brother. The people are bringing up side, talk, side issues that's distracting me. Forgive me. Let's focus for the glory of Christ. Okay? 3, 169, 170. Father, if you don't find it, I'm going to block you, my brother. I'm sorry, my brother in humanity. Because you have to learn a lesson not to speak with authority, <clears throat> speaking presumptuously, because you speak as if you know the Quran, and you don't. I'm sorry to say that. 3169-170. Think not of those who are slain in the way of Allah as dead. Guys, pay attention. Those who are killed physically are not dead. Nay, they are living with their Lord. They have provision. Jubilant are they because of that which Allah hath bestowed upon them of his bounty, rejoicing for the sake of those who have not joined them but are left behind. Okay, now, guys, did you catch it? According to the Quran, those physically slain in the way of Allah, the physical martyrs, they are alive. They are alive. Did you guys catch it? 
they are alive. Did you catch it? So a person who's physically dead, according to the Quran, is still alive. Put a one if you caught that. Just want to make sure you caught it. Okay. Now, does the Bible agree with the Quran that when someone dies physically, when someone dies physically, he or she is still alive spiritually? Fadi Harun, chapter 19, verse 17, nowhere mentions Jibreel. So you're lying to me, friend. There it says, Allah sent his ruh. Ruhana. It does not say Allah sent Jibreel. Please stop. You're wrong. The spirit in chapter 19, verse 17 is not Gabriel. Stop misquoting your own Quran. Okay. No, don't worry. I'm going to block him in a minute because he's being an idiot. He's not being sincere. Okay, now let's come back to the issue. Did you guys follow the discussion? Because Satan's trying to distract us, but by the blood of Jesus, he won't succeed. Focus. Did you guys see that the Quran says those physically dead are still alive? So physical death doesn't mean you cease to exist. Did you guys catch that? First point. Okay. Now, coming back to the Bible, does the Bible teach? Does the Bible teach that those physically dead are still alive, even though they're not alive with their bodies? Their bodies return to the dust, but they're still alive. As disembodied spirits slash souls, meaning they are now spirits, souls without a physical body. Let's go to Luke 20, 37 to 38. Okay. Luke 20, 37 to 38. Let's read it. Focus on the point. You got to get this answer, folks, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Luke 20, 37, 38. Now that the dead are raised, even Moses showed at the bush when he calleth the Lord, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Notice 20, 30, 38. For he is not a God of the dead, but of the living. For all live unto him. Did you catch it? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, though physically dead, they are alive to God. They are living with God. They are living to God. They're alive. Because when their spirits left their bodies, God sent them into the netherworld and preserved them there in rest and peace until Christ brought them into glory. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. As he turns there, one second. Okay, one second, folks. Okay. Let's read Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Thought he's going to get blocked in a minute. Okay. But ye are come unto Mount Sinai. Guys, pay attention. Unto the city of living God, heavenly Jerusalem. So now who lives in heavenly Jerusalem? Who's dwelling in heavenly Jerusalem? Jerusalem in heaven. Heaven. Let's see. <clears throat> To a new world company of angels. So angels are in heaven, heavenly Jerusalem. Angels are living there. To the general assembly in the church of the firstborn. So there are a group of believers who are having church there, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Did you catch it? Just men, men who are justified, perfected, their spirits are there. Hebrews 12, 23. The spirits of men, men and women, who are justified by God, who died physically, their spirits are now with the angels in heaven with God and Jesus Christ. Because notice Hebrews 12, 24. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Let's look at Hebrews 12, 23 one more time. Hebrews 12, 23 one more time. Guys, do not let Fadi distract you. Focus for the glory of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 12, 23 one more time. Okay. Watch here. Read, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, to God, God is there, God the Father is in heaven, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect. Did you catch it? Did you catch it? Human beings, men and women, that died, where are their spirits if they're believers in Christ? Where are their spirits if they're believers in Christ, according to Hebrews 12, 24? Where did the spirits... 
of those that physically died in Christ go to after Christ's resurrection and ascension into heaven? Where do their spirits go? According to Hebrews 12, 22 to 24. Guys, tell me. I want to make sure you're paying attention. Where did it go? Anyone? Where with the Lord? Where? That's I want to know if you're paying attention. Okay. Let's see. Come on, guys. Help me. Because I'm here to serve you, but you got to understand the argument so you can use it in your witness. Huh? You got it. Heavenly Jerusalem, heavenly Zion, and the presence of God in heaven. Heaven. You got it. So according to the Bible, when you physical, physically die, you do not cease to exist. You enter heavenly Jerusalem, Jerusalem above heaven, where God dwells, where angels dwell, where Christ dwells, and the spirits of believers who died in Christ dwell consciously alive in the presence of Jesus. You catch it? That was Hebrews 12, 22 to 20, 24. Marian, do pay attention and read the verses. Don't ask. You have to know. Yep, it reads the same way in the in the Jehovah Witness Bible, right? Okay, now let's go to Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Pay attention, folks, because I'm going to answer the question by showing you that Jesus can die as the God-man and still be consciously alive without this undermining the fact that he's God. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. What about it, medic? Why would I even care to address it when I'm refuting it? If you're paying attention, I'm refuting the doctrine of soul sleep. So what about it? Focus on the passages that refute this false doctrine. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar. This is the altar in heaven. Under the altar, the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Their souls were there under the altar in heaven, not their bodies, because their bodies went to the dust. Their souls were there. Aren't they conscious, though? Are they consciously alive? Let's see. Right? The souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held, and they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true? Dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? So they're not on the earth. Are you going to avenge those who killed us? And white robes were given unto every one of them. So they're now they're clothed. So they have a visible shape, a spiritual shape by which you can distinguish one from another. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until the fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. So you catch it? The souls of the martyrs in Christ, they're in, a, they're in heaven under the altar as a sacrifice to God because they sacrifice their life for God. They're conscious. They can speak, and they remember what took place on earth, and they're given robes. Do you see it? So physical death does not mean, physical death does not mean you cease to exist. The Quran doesn't teach that. The Bible doesn't teach it. Physical death means that your spirit, your soul, leaves your physical body. Your body returns to the dust, but your spirit, your soul, is still conscious and alive. Let's go to James 2.26. Yep, exactly, Dominus. James 2.26. What is physical death? Let's see. Born again, keep distracting us, and I'm going to have to block you too. Stop. Okay? James 2.26. Let's read. For as the body without the spirit is dead. So why do you die physically? Because your spirit leaves your body. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. Did you catch it? Why does physical death occur? Because the spirit leaves the body. You need the spirit to animate your body. Your spirit leaves your body. Your body dies. Is that clear? What is physical death? When the spirit leaves your physical body. Is that clear? Put a one if you're getting this. If you're confused, put a two. Any twos? Anyone confused? 
Okay, so far you're with me. Let's see. Let's see why Rachel died. Genesis 35, 16 to 19. Genesis 35, verses 16 to 19. Pay attention to verse 18. You can't rebuke me in Jesus. You don't have his authority because you're a wicked agent of Satan, a distraction. The Lord Jesus rebuke you for distracting the brethren. Okay? You wicked agent of Satan. Okay. Genesis 35, 16 to 19. Genesis 35, 16 to 19. Let's read. Rachel, Joseph's mother, died. Why? J17. You see, my talk, topic is about the God man dying. Why are you bringing up Hebrews 9 14? I'm going to be blocking a lot of people today. You're going to be next. Keep distracting us. Genesis 35, 16 to 19. Let's read. And they journeyed from Bethel, and there was but a little way to come to Ephrath. And Rachel travailed, and she had hard labor. And it came to pass when she was in hard labor that the midwife said unto her, Fear not, thou shalt have this son also. Now pay attention to verse 18. Dennis, where do you want me to go? And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died. Why did she die? Her soul departed her body. That she called his name Benoni, but his father called him Benjamin, Benjamin. And Rachel died and was buried in the way to Ephrath, which is Bethlehem. Now let's look at Genesis 35, 18 again. Thank you, Dennis. God bless you and watch over you. Genesis 35, 18. One more time. One more time. Guys, pay attention. And it came to pass as her soul was in departing, for she died. So notice. Why we physically die? We physically die when our soul slash spirit leaves our bodies. So when our souls, spirits leave our bodies, our bodies return to the dust, but our souls and spirits remain consciously alive, even either in the presence of God now or in a place of torment. Is that clear? Is that clear? Before I move on, let's go now to Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Watch here. Yeah, some people believe spirit and soul are different. Some believe the spirit is the soul, the soul is the spirit. I'm not getting into that debate. You can believe they're different or the same. doesn't matter right now. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was. Your body's from the dust. It returns to the earth. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Did you catch it? Your body's from the dust. It returns to the dust when you die. But your spirit goes back to God. And then God determines where your spirit will dwell until the resurrection. Whether it will dwell in his presence with the angels and the Lord Jesus or goes to the place of torment until he then reconstructs your physical bodies and unites your spirits with your bodies at the day of resurrection. Right? Did you get it? Post Ecclesiastes 12, 7 one more time. Because you guys got to write these verses down and look at them. One more time. Let's look at it one more time. Okay? Ecclesiastes 12, 7, uh, 12, 7. One more time. And thank our brother Orbiter for helping me. Lord bless him. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. So when your spirit returns to God, he then decides what to do with your spirit. Either allow your spirit, you as a spirit, to consciously live in his presence and rest, or you go to the place of torment until the day of resurrection. Job 34, 14 and 15. No, it's an old camera, brother, but I'm in a hotel room because I'm not in Chicago. Job 34, 14 and 15. As the Lord Jesus enables me to recall scriptures for his glory. Amen. May that fire of the Holy Spirit burn in all of us, Pistol, for the glory of Christ. Yes, medic. At the end, it will be your same physical body, but now glorified, medic. What happens when you die now? You go to heaven and you're clothed in white robes. And that white robe signify that you've made, been made pure 
and are righteous because of the blood of Jesus. Then at the end, your body that's disintegrated will be reconstructed, made immortal, indestructible, and your spirit will enter that body and animate it again. Medic for Christ. That's what the Bible teaches. No. Tiago, God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit raised Jesus physically back to life. All three did it, Tiago, and I'll show you that in a minute. Just bear with me. Job 34, 14 to 15. Let's read it. He just posted it. Read with me. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, all flesh shall perish together, and man shall return again unto dust. Did you catch it? What happens if God summons the spirit in you to leave your body? That breath, that soul to leave your body, your body goes back to the dust. Job 34, 14 and 15. One more time. Job 34, 14 and 15. Catch it. God bless you too, medic for Christ. And thank Jesus for blessing me to bless you. And pray he keeps me holy and pure and fills me with love and passion and knowledge to live for him and provide for me and my family. Job 34, 14, 15. I may have to do a part two. Notice what it says again. Pay attention. If he set his heart upon man, if God would put focus on man and his evils, if he gathered in, unto himself his spirit and his breath, the spirit he gave man and the breath he gave man, if he were to gather it back to himself, because he's the origin of it, he created your human spirit, he created your breath. If he summons it out of you, guess what happens? All flesh shall perish together, and man shall turn again unto dust. Did you catch it? Pistol it is, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, we need to strive to do so. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Not make excuses not to do so. So you guys caught it, right? If God summons the spirit that he created in you, the breath that he gave you, the soul that he gave you, and he summons it from you, right? Then your flesh goes back to dust. Right? Now let's go to Luke 8, 54, 55. When a person physically dies and he's resurrected, what is the cause of him being resurrected in the flesh again? The cause of him coming back to physical life after dying physically is the spirit returning to his body. Luke 8, 54 to 55. Michelle, Jesus' divine nature is omnipresent. Jesus as God in his divine nature is present everywhere. The entire creation is present before him. Michelle al -Saif. But Luke 8, 54, 55. Luke 8, 54 to 55. Let's read this. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Made her eyes. And her spirit came again, and she arose straight away, and he commanded to give her meat. Did you catch it? This was Jairus' daughter. She died. When he took her by the hand, he said, made her eyes. And guess what happened? Her spirit returned to her body and animated her body. So why did she die physically? Because her spirit left. How did she come back to physical life? Because the spirit returned to her body. Do you catch it? Did you catch it? One more time, Luke 8, 54, 55. Tidge, we strive to be 100% sinless, but we will fail. But thank God we're covered by the blood of Jesus who forgives. We will be sinless when we're glorified in his presence. Luke 8, 54 to 55. Freddie, that actually backfires against you and shows you don't know what you're talking about. Because when you're asleep, you're still conscious in that you still can dream. And your brain is still functioning, and your heart is still beating, and your blood is still pumping. So the most stupidest thing you could have done is mention sleep as a way of undermining the fact that those who are asleep are still alive spiritually. Because when you're asleep, you still dream, don't you? And you're aware of your dreams, and your brain is still functioning, and your heart is still beating. That is the stupidest objection you can bring against this teaching. Stop by your head so you don't further embarrass yourself. Okay, Freddie. Sorry, my brother from a different one. I love you, Freddie. I thought you were another guy trying to attack me because today I've been attacked left and right. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. I'm being attacked left and right, so I'm gun shy. Pop, pop, 
Shoot and ask questions later. I love you, Fred. Love you for the sake of Jesus. My brother from a different mother. <laughs> Freddie, you're my homie. And you know me because you used to kick it to my lady, Naomi. So you owe me, homie. You get it now? All right. Sorry, guys. I'm really gun shy today because there are so many distractions and attacks and nuisances. Luke 8, 54, 55. Let's read. Let's read. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose straight away, and he commanded to give her meat. So why did she come back to physical life? Because her spirit returned to her body. Why did she die physically? Because her spirit left her body. Is that clear? Are you getting it? Is it clear? Physical death means your spirit slash soul leaves your body. Your body returns to dust, but your spirit slash, slash soul is still conscious alive. Here's another, here's another sat not satanic troll. Hold on, guys. Hold on. Sorry about that. One second, guys. Today I'm going to get rid of all the agents of Satan for the glory of Jesus, so no more distractions. Okay, so let's see what happened to our Lord. Let's read Luke 23, 46. Luke 23, 46. Okay. Sorry about that. Luke 23, 46. Yep. We're having fun today. Blocking all the agents of Satan. Okay. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. Did you catch it? Why did Jesus die? Because he, he surrendered his spirit. His spirit left his body. You catch it? Luke 23, 46. And when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. And having said thus, he gave up the ghost. So his spirit left his body and he physically died. And make sure you hit that, that like button. Smash it, folks. Do you catch it? So why did Jesus physically die? Because his spirit left his body. Do you catch it? Thank God, Freddie, that Jesus saved you through our meager efforts and the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you, bro. So why did Jesus physically die? Because he gave up his spirit. He commanded his spirit to leave his body. John 1930. I don't know who is me. I mean, John 1930. Me neither, fit Christian. I hope I don't have love handles in my glorified body. John 1930. God bless you first last. I haven't seen you in a while. Good to see you. John 1930, watch what happens. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up the ghost, gave up the spirit. Ghost is the old English way of saying spirit. Did you catch it? John 1930, gave up the spirit, he died. Into your hands I commit my spirit, Father. Gave up the spirit, he died. So Jesus physically died because his spirit left his body. Yes, Fadi Harun. When we say Jesus resurrected physically, it's because that spirit went back into his body and animated his body again. Excellent observation, Fadi. St. Gundy, this is all of my articles already. I wrote an article on Jesus dying. Yes, Boaz, you read it, Luke 23, 46. One more time. Let's post it for Boaz. Let's read it one more time. And then John 19, 30. One more time. Yes, Michelle El Saif, his human spirit would have gone down to Sheol, not to save people, but to proclaim to the righteous who are in Sheol in rest that he had come to take them to heaven. I'll get into that later. Luke 23, 46, let's read. Come on, Samuel. Don't quote Ecclesiastes 9, 5 out of context. Please, friend, focus. Okay, Luke 23, 46, and when Jesus had cried with a loud voice, he said, Father, 
Into thy hands I commend my spirit. Having said thus, he gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. John 19, 30. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. He gave up his spirit. He commanded his spirit to leave his body. Did you catch that, Boaz? No. Jesus' spirit here means his human spirit. Because for Jesus to be truly human, he has to have a human spirit and a human body. The spirit that he gave up is the human spirit that the Father, Son, Holy Spirit created from the blessed womb of his mother so that Jesus could take on and possess to be truly human. Don't confuse Jesus' human spirit with the Holy Spirit and Jesus as God and as God being spirit. Not to confuse you. It's not about his human spirit. My brother, if you give up the spirit, you're going to die. So what are you saying? Why do you die? Because you give up the spirit. When the spirit is given up, you physically die. So what are you saying? You're actually saying nothing because that's what James 2.26 says. Just as the body apart from the spirit is dead. So to give up the spirit means to die. So it's not simply meaning death. It's telling you why you die because the spirit has been <clears throat> surrendered. When you surrender the spirit, give up the spirit. Ipso facto, you're dead physically. Is that clear? So far, everyone getting it? Exactly, first and last. The spirit is what God uses to animate your body. And when your human spirit leaves and your physical body returns to dust and decays. Yes. Let me explain what it means Jesus has a divine spirit. Not that Jesus has a divine spirit. Jesus as God is spirit. Let me explain this. Hold on. Okay, now I'm going to have to confuse you guys. Slow down on the texting. Slow down on the questions. Follow me. God by nature is spirit. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. What does that mean? It means that God by nature is invisible, formless, shapeless, spaceless, timeless. That's what it means when we say God is spirit. How do I know? Because in John 4, 24, it's talking about God being omnipresent so that wherever you are, God sees you and you have access to God because God doesn't have a body that limits him to time, space, and place. So God's nature is spirit, meaning as God, he is formless, shapeless, timeless, invisible. So Jesus as God is spirit in that sense. As God in his divine nature, Jesus is invisible. Jesus is formless. Jesus is shapeless. Jesus is spaceless. So is the Father and the Holy Spirit because all three of them are God and possess that nature, right? Did you get that so far? So Jesus in his divine nature as God is spirit. What do I mean he's spirit? Meaning he's invisible, shapeless, formless, spaceless, timeless. So is the Father, so is the Holy Spirit. Did you get that first part? Okay. Now, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person of God who's distinct from the Father and the Son, and he's called the Holy Spirit for that very reason. He's called the Holy Spirit in order to distinguish him from the Father and the Son so that he's not confused with the Father and the Son. In other words, that's his name. Like the Father's name is the Father, the Son's name is the Son. Well, his name is the Holy Spirit so that you know he's not the same person as the Father or the same person as the Son. Is that clear? Bamidala, are you asking sincerely or are you trying to be a troublemaker? Because that objection is easily answered. So the Holy Spirit is also spirit by nature because he's God by nature. And like the Father and the Son, he's invisible, spaceless, shapeless, and formless. But why is he called the Holy Spirit? In order to differentiate him from the person of the Father and the person of the Son so that you don't confuse him. And think he's the same person as the father and the same person as the son. 
There are three different persons, three different relationships with three different names so that we know they're not the same person. Did you understand that second part? Yes, medic for Christ. Did you understand why he's called the Holy Spirit? Even though the Father is spirit, the Son is spirit, like the Holy Spirit is spirit. The Father is holy, the Son is holy, like the Holy Spirit is holy. So then why call him that? Because that's his name to distinguish him from the Father and the Son. I have no idea what Abu Qura is talking about. This guy has been confusing me for the last couple of days. So do you understand what I'm saying now? Jesus is spirit, but he's not the Holy Spirit. Because there it means Jesus' nature is invisible, spaceless, formless, shapeless, timeless. But the Holy Spirit also has that nature. So does the Father. So Jesus is spirit in that sense. The Holy Spirit is called that to distinguish him, to distinguish his person from the person of the Father and the Son. So the Father is called the Father so that you know that he's not the Son. The Son is called the Son so that you know he's not the Father. The Holy Spirit is called the Holy Spirit so that you know he's not the Father, he's not the Son. There are three different persons, three different relationships, but all possess the same nature of God, so all of them are spirit by nature. Okay. Let's get rid of this wicked agent, son of Satan, Serpio, because he's spewing blasphemies from his father, the devil. Bye-bye, friend. Hold on. Guys, this is a good day to get blocked. You be stupid and use of Satan to distract. I'm sending you back to Meccaville. Not politically correct. You ask sincere questions, I'll answer sincerely. Lord Jesus, forgive me if I'm quick to the trigger, but I'm not going to tolerate distractions and fools and foolish questions. Everyone else get it now? Did you get it so far? What it means for Jesus to be spirit and what it means for the Holy Spirit to be called the Holy Spirit. Did you get that too? Thank you, David. You're handsome too, but not as handsome as me. Anyone confused, put a two. Now, the third element. The third element. Okay, here's the third element. <clears throat> if being truly human means you have to have a human spirit. Truly human must possess a human spirit. So now that Jesus became man, part of becoming man, taking on a human nature... He took on a human spirit and united himself to his person. Are you with me there? You with me there? So now Jesus has another nature, a human nature. But to be truly human, he has to have a human spirit. That human spirit was created at the conception from his blessed mother's womb. And he took that human spirit and united it to his person. So Jesus as God is spirit, meaning that as God, being spirit, he's invisible, formless, shapeless, spaceless. But when he became human, to be truly human, he had to take on a human spirit. A human spirit that was created in the blessed womb of his mother by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, is that clear now? So you got to go back and listen to this session and re-listen to it and re-listen to it until it becomes second nature. Cruzito, ask me one more time. You know I'm going to block you, right? You know one of the virtues of being Christian is patience? Where is that in the Bible? The Bible that says that the word became flesh, a human being. So let me ask you a light before I bounce you. Can you be truly human if you don't have a human spirit, a human soul? So I can send you on your merry way. Answer that alike. Can God become human without having a physical body, a human soul, a human mind? Answer quickly because I'm going to bounce you right now. Hold on. Alike, answer. You got 20 seconds. No, I didn't say God is three substances. 
You're nervous now, aren't you? I like. Did Jesus become flesh? Did he become human? Did he become a man? Was he born as a baby? Did he have a human nature? Yes. Now, relax. Okay, my friend. Let me let me show you. I'm going to relax. Getting rid of nuisances and Satan's like you. That's how I relax, man. So you want me to relax? Hey, I'll take you up on it. Bye, bye. Bye, 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 bye. Let's sing. Bye, bye. I don't suffer fools gladly. Bye, 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 bye. Bye, bye. Oh, bye, 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 bye. You like that, guys? Hold on. Let me send my friend on his merry way. We were sailing along on a moonlight bay. Hold on. I don't see anything. Bye, bye. Guys, can you put some text if you're here? No, bro, you're not a Christian if you're going to distract me and then tell me to relax and try to be a nuisance. Okay. Yes, arrogant. Ooh, I'm arrogant just because I don't like you and I'm going to get rid of you. Ooh, shiny. Ooh, I'm hurt my feelings. Ooh, I'm hurt. Ooh, shiny. Shiny. Sorry, guys, pray with me. You know I'm a work in progress. I'm proof that you need the grace of Jesus to be saved. Oh, he's arrogant. Okay. Sorry, guys. You know, if I didn't make it as a preacher, I'd make it as a stand-up comedian but sitting down. Right? All right. Okay, everyone understood now what it means for Jesus as God to be spirit, what it means for the Holy Spirit to be called Holy Spirit, and what it means for Jesus to be truly human and have a human spirit. Did you guys at least get that? Now you got to go back and listen and re-listen and re-re-listen, right? Is that clear? If anyone's confused and sincerely confused wants an answer, put a two. I don't have time for games. I don't have time for people being silly. Uh oh, I lost my face. What happened? Sorry about that. We're losing connection. Okay. So now let me recap. Physical death is when your spirit, your slash soul, leaves your body and your body returns to the dust. dust. But you continue to exist consciously as a spirit, as a soul. You're still alive. You're still alert. You're still conscious of your surroundings. Was that clear? Twelve thirty-four. I repeat the same point more than once, so you should be able to catch up by the grace of God's spirit. Was that clear? So physical death doesn't mean you cease to exist. Physical death doesn't mean. Secession of life. That's not what it means. So now here's my question. Here's my question. If Jesus died but didn't cease to exist, died physically but was still alive and conscious, why then would it be a problem for Jesus the God meant to die when physical death doesn't mean he ceased to exist, he was still alive, he was still conscious, and as God he was still sustaining creation? So what's the problem? What's the problem? Can tell someone tell me what the problem is? Yes. The human nature, the flesh, see the Bible speaks of flesh to either refer, refer to the whole person or refers to his physical body or refers to the sinful nature that lives in your physical body. And also influences your mind and your heart. So the context will determine what it means when the Bible writer uses flesh. In John 1.14, when it says the word became flesh, it means he became a human being. Their flesh, right, means humanity. A flesh and blood, physical human being, and all that accompanies human nature. Right? Is that clear? So, we've just established from the Quran and the Bible, not that we care for the Quran, but the Muslims do, that physical death doesn't mean ceasing to exist. 
the Quran and the Bible agree that when someone physically dies, their body returns to the dust, but their souls leave their bodies. And the Bible speaks of the spirits of the dead leaving their bodies. And in that state, disembodied, meaning without a body, they still continue to experience conscious existence. They're still alive. They're still alert. So if Jesus, the God-man, died without ceasing to exist, what's the problem with Jesus, the God-man, dying when he's still fully alive, fully alert, fully conscious? What's the problem? Why is this an objection? So yes, the God-man died. Jesus, as God, became man to experience a human death. So God experienced human death without ceasing to exist. So the God-man, that one person, the God-man died a human death. The God-man died without ceasing to exist. Right? Is that clear? Just let me know if it's clear. Because now I'm going to prove to you that Jesus was alive and conscious while his body was in the grave. I'm going to prove that to you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Let me know if you're ready for the proof. Now I'm going to prove it from Jesus' own mouth that when physically he died and his body was in the tomb, he was still alive and conscious and alert and still sustaining creation because he is life. Let me know if you're ready. What happened? I don't see the text. Sorry about that, guys. Hold on. I want to make sure. Sorry about that, folks. I couldn't see the comments. Yeah, I'm going to show you that the Father, Son, and Spirit raised Jesus. Okay. John 2, 19 to 22. Tiago, here's your answer. Who raised Jesus from the dead? God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All three of them raised Jesus from the dead. John 2, 19 to 22. Exactly, Rachel, Rachel. He never ceased to exist. Okay. Not so much recreated it as resurrected it because it didn't decay. He preserved the body from decaying, medic. Okay, John 2, 19 to 22. Let's read. Guys, read what Orbiter posted. Jesus answered and said unto them, Destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. Post it again, Orbiter, if you don't mind. Then said the Jews, 46 years was the temple in building, and wilt thou, you, rear it up in three days? You're going to do it? But he spake of the temple of his body. Post it again, my brother. When therefore he was raised, risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. Okay. Okay, post it again. Sorry, hold on, guys. One more time. Sorry, I'm just getting saying some satanic nuisances. One more time. Sorry about that, guys. In Jesus' name, may you protect us from the evil one. Okay, John 2, 19 to 22, one more time. But guys, slow down text so you can read it. I want you to see the word of God for yourself. Okay, watch here. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple, and in three days I, I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, 46 years was this temple in building, and wilt thou, you, rear it up in three days? But he spake of the temple of his body. So let me ask you a question. Oops. Okay, sorry. Okay, there was a delay. Okay, do you see? Destroy this temple and I will raise it up. Thou will raise it up. So, do you guys, can I ask you a question? Jesus said, when they destroy his body, the temple, his body is the temple, he himself will raise it up in three days. Let me ask you a question, folks. Let me ask you a question. How can Jesus raise his own physical body, his physical temple, in three days? If Jesus wasn't alive and conscious and alert during those three days. 
Can you answer that for me before I move on to the next post? Someone tell me. Answer the question. Sorry about that. I think uh, I can't see the text, so let me just refresh it. Sorry, folks. Again, Satan's upset, but glory to Jesus Christ. We have the victory in Christ. Sorry about that. Let's try this again. Yeah. Medic, come on, my brother. Why are you killing me, dude? Medic, you're going to hurt me today. I'm going to have a heart attack. Do you believe in the Trinity, Medic? Just curious. Do you believe in the Trinity? If so, why would it confuse you and be a problem that the Father raised Jesus, Jesus raised himself, and the Spirit raised himself, uh, raised him? Why are you assuming that if Jesus raised himself, the Father didn't or the Spirit didn't? All three together raised Jesus. So, Medic, don't hurt me, my brother, or I'm going to need medical attention. Okay, let's try this again now. If Jesus just said, destroy this temple, which is my body, and I will raise it up in three days, he will raise up his physical body, his physical temple, in three days. How could Jesus raise his physical body back to life and make it immortal if he wasn't alive or conscious for those three days? What's the answer? What's the answer? What's the answer, folks? Come on, give me the answer. Someone help me. How can he raise himself back to life? Doesn't that prove not that he never died? He did die physically. He said, destroy it. Doesn't that prove that though physically he died, he was still alive, he was still conscious, he was still alert, and he was still sustaining creation? Is that clear? We do have an immortal soul because God created your soul to live immortally. But he didn't create your soul to live without a body. He created you to be an embodied spirit. But death then separates your soul and body. So is it this proof? I want to see if you got it. Jesus the God-man was still alive while his body was in the tomb. He was still conscious. And as God, he was still sustaining creation in his own body and raised it to life. No, Denny, he wasn't really destroyed. Oh, my goodness. Oof. All right, John 10, 17 to 18. Shamiran, that eternal spirit is the Holy Spirit. John 10, 17 to 18. Yes, Medic, all three members of the God had raised them. John 10, 17, 18. I'm almost done. This was a really, really intense session. John 10, 17, 18. Someone is chiming in again and saying, soul is physical, 100% spirit. Not. I have no idea what you're talking about. I will give you a million bucks where you show me that the soul is 100% physical. Please don't speak on an issue. If you haven't studied it in depth, please, guys, don't help me by making such comments that distract me to correct you. John 10, 17, 18. One more time, my brother Overture. Sorry, guys. One more time. Let's read. Oh, my goodness. This guy's asking me about the Edomatrite. Oh, man. We were sailing along on the moonlight. Okay, let's read what Jesus says. Therefore doth my father love me, John 10, 17, 18, because I lay down my life that I might take it again. I lay it down and I take it again. No man taketh it from me, but I lay it down of myself. No one can take my life. I lay it down. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. Let me ask you a question again. How can Jesus have power to raise his life, physical life, back from the grave 
if he wasn't still alive and conscious during the three days that his body was in the tomb. Thank you, Andy. What does this tell us? Jesus was still alive, conscious and alert, and he was still God, sustaining creation, which is why he could then raise his life back from the grave, raise his body back from the grave and make it immortal because he was still conscious, he was still alive, he was still alert, he was still God, he was still sustaining creation. No, I'm going to have to bounce you too. Soul is not just the breath in your nostrils for the love of God. Did you read Revelation 6, 9 to 11, where it says the souls of those who were killed were under the altar? Are you telling me that was their breath under the altar? The souls of those in heaven who were speaking to God as souls, Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Stop commenting and pontificating in your ignorance, brother. Please stop. We're more than a soul, Baharat. We're more than a spirit. We're more than a body. We're all of that. Baharat needs to take a take a break, a vacation somewhere. Baharat, bye bye, bye bye. Oops, bye 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 bye. Sorry guys, man. There was a lot of distractions today. Obviously, Satan wasn't happy. Hold on, let me set Baharat on the merry way. Do you guys remember Revelation six nine to eleven, where John says? When the fifth seal was open, I saw the souls of those who were killed for their testimony under the altar. According to this brother here, the soul is the breath in their nostrils. So the breath of their nostrils was there talking. Unbelievable. Okay. Stop commenting and pontificating in your ignorance, brothers and sisters. This is the time to learn not to pontificate. Stop distracting us. We want to focus on the topic. Lord Jesus, have mercy on me. Forgive me, but I'm human as well. Okay, did we get it thus far? Was Jesus still alive and conscious when his body was in the tomb? Revelation 6, 9 to 11, he just posted it. Read it. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testament which they, which they held. And when he had opened the fifth seal, they cried with a loud voice. How does the breath in your nostrils cry? Stop making those statements. I corrected you. Stop trying to challenge me. You're wrong, brother. Accept correction for the love of Christ. Let the Bible inform your theology and correct your theology. And I pray that for myself. Okay, so everyone is clear. Can Jesus, the God-man, die a human death? And still be God and still be conscious and still be alive. Yes, medic. Rebel Mark. He said the soul is the breath in your nostrils. Rebel Mark. That's what he said. He was wrong. Okay. Was Jesus still alive, still conscious, still alert, still sustaining creation when his body was dead, destroyed in the tomb? Was he still alive, still conscious, still alert, still sustaining creation when his body lay in the tomb? Yes, because John 2, 19 and 22, John 10, 10, 17, 18, Jesus says, you destroy this temple, my body. I will raise it up in three days. I lay it down of my accord. No one can take it from me. And I pick it up again. He must have been still consciously alive. And he must be God to have the power to raise his physical body back to mortal life. Only God can do that. So much for this pathetic objection, right? Now, when Jesus raised his physical body to life and made it immortal, did he do it alone or did he do it in union with the Father and the Spirit? In other words, did the Father with the Son and the Holy Spirit raise Jesus' physical body and made it immortal? Were all three of them involved because all three of them are God and work together always? Yes, all three of them did it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 6, 14. 1 Corinthians 6, 14. Hit that like button. Smash it, folks. Yep, Fadi got it. Let me now prove it. 
1 Corinthians 6, 14. And God hath both raised up the Lord. Oh, here God is the Father. Tiago, pay attention. Here God is the Father. God hath raised up the Lord Jesus and will also raise up us up us by his own power. 2 Corinthians 4.14. 2 Corinthians 4.14. Let me prove it to you. All three persons of God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the one God, Raised Jesus physically and made Jesus' human nature, his physical body, immortal. All three together. Tiago, pre keep praying that God will make me more mightier in the word, more knowledgeable, more holy, more love with Jesus, and more sacrificial. 2 Corinthians 4.14. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. So God the Father raised Jesus and will raise us up with Jesus by Jesus. So Jesus and the Father raised Jesus, and Jesus and the Father will raise the dead at the last day. Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Cruzito, God bless you. Galatians 1.1. 1, 1. Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by men, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. Bam! God the Father raised Jesus. Jesus raised Jesus. Did the Holy Spirit raise Jesus? 1 Peter 3.18. Man, glory to God, an intense and powerful session. All glory to the triumph God, Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen? I really feel the heat. 1 Peter 3.18. Let's see. God bless you too, world changer. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Pay attention. Being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Bam! Bam! Uh... Pabean, you know you're going to have to leave my page, right? Because you said souls means the breath in your nostrils. But in Revelation 6, 9 to 11, it says the souls are there in heaven, conscious, alive, and speaking. I just refuted you, but in your arrogance and stubbornness, you still want to prove yourself right. You're going to have to leave my page, my brother. I don't tolerate troublemakers. I'm sorry. 1 Peter 3, 18. It says he was made alive by the Spirit. Bam! Now, Revelation 6, I'm sorry, Romans 6, 9 to 11. Romans 6, 9 to 11. Yep, Father, he talks about the Holy Spirit. But quickened by the Spirit. Bam! Okay, now Romans 6, 9 to 11. Romans 6, 9 to 11. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. I'm sorry. Death hath no more dominion over him. Romans 8, 9 to 11. My, my apologies. I don't know why. See, I, the reason why Romans 6, 9 to 11, because of that brother. I was thinking Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Revelation 6, 9 to 11. So I made the mistake of Romans 6, 9 to 11. Romans 8, 9 to 11. You see what happens with distractions, folks? Romans 8, 9 to 11. Romans 8, 9 to 11. God bless you too, Jesus reigns, and he does reign. Romans 8, 9 to 11. But we are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Guys, catch the Trinitarian implication of this passage. It says God's spirit is in you, but pay attention. We're going to have to post it again. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. Because of our sin, our body will die and decay. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. So the spirit gives life to your inner man. 
makes you spiritually alive because of the righteousness of Christ. Now watch verse 11, folks. Verse 11. Please pay attention. Pay attention, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, wow, God by his spirit raised Jesus from the dead. The spirit of him who raised Jesus. So God by his spirit raised Jesus from the dead. Let's read Romans 8, 11. Dwell in you. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Wow. God by his spirit raised Jesus. And God, by that same spirit, will also raise us. Did you catch it? So who raised Jesus? The Father. Who raised Jesus? The Son. Who raised Jesus? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God, the Spirit of Christ. Who raised the dead at the end? The Father. Who raised dead at the end? Jesus. Who raised dead at the end, especially believers? The Spirit. All three persons of the Godhead. Because they're one God, three persons, three persons, one God. That's why we're Trinitarians. You catch it? That means they're omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent. Now let's look at Romans 8, 9 to 10 one more time. Romans 8, 9 to 10 one more time. That physical body, Boaz, that died, was raised and transformed. So you, you, I don't know what you mean when you keep saying transformed body. Is it the same body that was buried that came to life? Yes, he's in that body. But was that body then transformed so that it's immortal, indestructible, and cannot die? Yes. It's that body now transformed, but it's that same body. Romans 8, 9 to 10. Read with me, folks. Romans 8, 9 to 10. Orbiter, one more time. Just put Romans 8, 9 to 10. That's it. Sorry to keep doing this to you, brother, but... Because they're asking me questions, I'm trying to keep up with them. Jeremy, who said when you die, you don't go straight to heaven, bro? Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, I just showed that the spirits of believers in Christ who die are in heavenly Jerusalem with God the Father, with Jesus Christ and the angels. That's Hebrews 12, 23 to 24. And Revelation 6, 9 to 11 says the same thing. Romans 8, 9 to 10, let's read. Guys, who actually lives in you? Catch this. You don't need to put 11, Orbiter. You don't need to put 11. That's why I said Romans 8, 9, and 10. Who dwells in you? Who's in fellowship with you? No. What's being raised at the dead in the end days? Jeremy, come on, bro. My, my brother from a different mother, you're on my Facebook page. Don't hurt me, bro. What is going to be raised in the end days? Not their spirits, but their bodies. Your body doesn't go to heaven. Your spirit does if you're a believer. Why confuse the two, my brother, from a different mother like no other? One more time, Orbiter, Romans 8, 9 and 10. That's it, no 11. Yes, you honestly want to learn, my brother? Stop hanging out with Naomi, homie, because you owe me, my brother, from a different mother like no other? All right, Romans 8, 9 and 10. I know I got issues. Woo! Romans 8, 9 to 10. Let's post it one more time. Boy, do I got issues. Pray for me to achieve my goals. I got more weight to lose and get my muscles back, get my health and my holiness back. One more time, Romans 8, 9 to 10. That's right, Jeremy. Lunch is on you, but I'd rather eat it on a table than on you. Repent, you sinner. Okay, Romans 8, 9 to 10. But you are not in the flesh. Ta yeah, I got major ADHD. And you would know, wouldn't you? Romans 8, 9 to 10. Who lives in you? Who lives in you? Who dwells in you? Who has fellowship with you? Pay attention. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. So it's God's spirit that lives in you, meaning the Holy Spirit that belongs to God. But hold on, folks. Notice the second part. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Wow. Wait, I thought it's God's spirit that lives in me. But now it says Christ's spirit lives in me. But then notice verse 10. And if Christ be in you, what? So who actually lives in me? Christ, the Holy Spirit that belongs to God, the Holy Spirit that belongs to Christ, or all of the above? Yes, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit lives in you. And the Holy Spirit belongs to Christ. And if the Spirit lives in you, then the Father also lives in you and the Son lives in you. That's why we're Trinitarians, folks. 
You caught it? Now, Jeremy, let me answer your question thoroughly. What the Holy Spirit is going to raise at the end of the days, at the end of the age, is not your spirit, but your physical body. That's what he's going to give life to. Your mortal body, it said. Romans 8, 11. Your body that dies will be made alive by the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the meantime, if you're a believer, your spirit leaves your body, Jeremy. Your soul leaves your body, Jeremy, and goes to heaven to dwell with God the Father, Jesus Christ the Lord, and the angels. Where do you find that? Hebrews 12, 22 to 24, and Revelation 6, 9 to 11. Is that clear, Jeremy? Is that clear? Thank you, Big Sofo. Okay, so I hope it's clear. Now, folks, here's what you got to do. Hit the like button, subscribe. Make sure to save and download this YouTube video to your YouTube pages. Pass it on because I believe this is one of the most important topics I've discussed, which is why we're getting attacked and distracted left and right. Jesus, the God-man dying, how can he be God if he died? One of the most important topics you need to know. I just gave you over an hour of verse after verse of biblical exposition showing, yes, Jesus, the God-man died, but he was still conscious and alive and still God. You need to go back and listen to this. Take careful notes. Ask the Spirit to help you understand it and then teach it to others. Please do that for the glory of Christ. With that said, my time is up. There's one more objection. Lord willing, I'll answer sometime this week. I may be back Thursday or Friday, but not tomorrow. I'm going to take a break. So Lord willing, I'll announce it on my Facebook pages when I'll come back and address another objection to Jesus being God who died. But pray for me. Pray for the ministry. Pray for the support. I'll put the links to my Patreon pages after I edit the video after I'm done. Pray for my daughters that the Lord will bless them and keep them. Pray God will confirm whether it's his will for me to move to Arizona because I plan to relocate there. And pray God will make his will clear to me about a, a relationship. Like I said, if God wants me to remain celibate, his will be done. But so far, I don't have the gift. So pray for that, for that godly woman, right? So we can serve Jesus together. Okay, guys? Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Yahovah to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Love you guys. Hope you're blessed and challenged and convicted. And you learned a lot and fell more passionately in love with the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit.